Good afternoon and welcome to episode 832. And topic today is um, love yourself. You don't know how long you have and how my practice deepened me. This is a little 9-11 tribute, 9-11 relevant, and also some teaching points about self-support, self-love. So before I jump into the topic and give you all the details, let me introduce myself, give you details about that before I get started. So thanks for joining me and welcome to my broadcast. This is a Facebook Live, by the way, not a, and it goes on to YouTube later on, so I'll give you the replay links at the back end, so stay tuned for that. Um, my name is Barry Selby, nice to have you with me. I am an inspirational speaker, a love and relationships expert, helping women create balance in love, life and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. I'm also the, I'm also the author of the best-selling book, or I'm the best-selling author, I always get that which way it is. Author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women. Um, inspirational book, that'll be in the comments at the back end as well. Got off of some stuff I have. Um, and because of being a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, I started these talks over two and a half years ago now, almost, oh, actually almost three years ago, wow. Called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. It was December 2016, so I'm just realizing we're coming full circle again. And so today we're episode number 832. Yes, a lot of these are under my belt now, do them daily. And the topic today is about um, love yourself, it, it, actually now I must mess it up. It's something like love yourself now, you don't know how long you have, or love yourself more, something, something like that. I'll explain more in a moment. Um, and also how I practice deep in me, because I want to tell you a little story about what happened to me on September 11th um, in LA, just to be clear, I wasn't in New York. So. Today is 9-11, hence the parentheses and conclusion in the title. And for some people, and for some dear friends of mine, it's a very traumatic experience and time because they were close to ground zero. Um, friends of mine who were in New York, I was actually on the phone with a friend of mine, I think it was two days later because they didn't have a phone connection at that time, talking to her because she was actually, her, her window of the house she was in looked out right at the Twin Towers and she saw them fall. It was an incredible experience. So I understand that part of it. Now, as I mentioned, I was in LA and we all know where we were, at least I believe we all know where we were, on September 11th that morning, which is a Tuesday. I do remember that vividly as well. So to tell the story briefly, I did, I did share this in another group earlier, so I can say the same thing again pretty easily, is um, I had been going to Agape Spiritual Center at that time uh, six years, seven years, no, yes, seven years, and was just been licensed a year pr previously as a spiritual counselor, basically a prayer practitioner at Agape. And that morning, as I d was doing every morning then, because I was very committed, I was at Gold's Gym very early in the morning working out. And I remember being on the elliptical machine, so I was, I was uh, striding away on the machine. And with my buddies, there were three of us working out together. And we were, we were just uh, striding, so we were striding along on, the, on the, uh, um, the machine. And across from where the, where the exercise machines were was a row of television screens on the monitor on the walls. And those television screens, by the way, in 2001, weren't flat screens. If you remember 2001, things were different then. No smartphones. I didn't have my, I don't, I'm sure, I don't think I had my cell phone on me. No, no, but I had a landline. <laughs> I still had a landline. I lived in Venice at the time. I remember this vividly. So 2001, hi, Christina. Love, love you too. Thanks for being here. Um, so I was at the gym working out and suddenly on all the TV screens, which were big, you know, CRTs, cathode ray tubes, these deep TVs we had back in the day, back in the day, it's 18 years ago. It's amazing what's changed. Anyway, that's a different topic. On every single TV, the same thing was shown, which was the, the, ta the, the plane hitting the tower. We didn't know anything at the time, and, the, and also the volume was off, because this is the gym. You know, We all had headphones on, we were yelling, TVs were muted. But it doesn't matter what channel was on the TV, the same thing was showing. So we all stopped. I mean, the whole gym went quiet. And, and it was the only time I remember off the top of my head where a gold gym went dead silent, except when it's closed, of course. But it changed everything. We all were like, what's going on? We gathered around the TVs, we're watching what's going on. Everybody forgot their workouts because we were focusing on what was happening. I went home pretty quickly after that. And when I got home, there was a voicemail on my, sorry, there was, an, there was a recording on my answering machine. Didn't have voicemail back then. <laughs> Saying, please come into Agape, we need your support. And that, I remember it was a Tuesday because the first Tuesday in September was traditionally when Agape started its fall classes. And that class that was going on that Tuesday morning there were, that time, the Tuesday morning and Tuesday evening classes were a 9 a.m. to noon class on Tuesday and a Tuesday morning and then a 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. class in the evening. That, they'll be relevant in a moment. And this is also the foundation class that Reverend Michael used to teach back then. This is the old format before 2005 when we were an independent. So basically, there was a voice my machine saying, voice, sorry, there was an answer. <laughs> yeah. 
a message on my answering machine in a voicemail. Things change. To go to Agape, we needed your help. And as a newly minted practitioner, I'd only been a practitioner a year at this point, you know, I got cleaned up, showered, got in the car, drove to Agape, um, and pulled in the parking lot. There were quite a few cars there. Walked into the sanctuary of the Agape, Agape Spiritual Center, was my spiritual home, by the way, I've said, shared about that before, and was, I stopped dead in my tracks because I knew that the class had started that morning, which basically meant 20, 25, 30 people might be in the class with Michael. The evening class would be bigger, about maybe 80 people. But the morning class would be small, like 30, 40 people, because most people were at work. Walked in the room, and there were about 500 people in there, all gathered around Reverend Michael. Right? The chairs are pulled around, Reverend Michael was standing there and all around him. And basically, he was preaching. Not, not preaching like a Sunday service, but he was teaching about love. He was teaching about spirit. He was teaching and answering questions about what, what the F happened. Because the people came to Agape, forget about the classes, they wanted to get support, they wanted to be, feel safe, they wanted to be prayed up, which is why I was being called in. So the bunch of us, maybe a, probably 100 practitioners at least, were all sitting around the outside of the sanctuary, or at least around the circle, holding vigil, holding space, and listening, because we were also like, what's going on too? We were very, both, at that time, that was nine, that was nine o'clock in the morning. We didn't know what was going on either at that time. We just knew what had happened. We didn't know details of what ha who caused it, what was going on. So a lot of question marks in the air. So a lot of people are asking, Reverend Michael, you know, if spirit, is, if God is good, spirit's good as we teach, how could this happen? How could people die? How could planes hit? You know, all this stuff. It was a very powerful morning in many levels. And as a practitioner, one of the hundred plus who were there, we were praying continually through the day for people who come back and sit with us who wanted prayer for their friends, for themselves, for family members, for the victims, for everything. And so we would go through the whole day. Finally, um, it tapered off a little bit in the mid-afternoon. And we actually got to go, we actually brought, they brought pizza, I think, if I remember correctly. We had food there because we weren't leaving. We had to stay because there were people needing prayer. So then we went through to the evening. And so people, it was set classes in the evening, so at 7 o'clock. Michael had taken a break for a minute. Some other ministers had come in and covered whilst he went and got refreshed. Because they'd be teaching that evening again. Yeah, I've been a guy, actually, I've been, uh, Christine, I've been with Agape since 94, so 25 years. So 7 o'clock rolls around. And because it's also after work, not only were there 80 people there for the class, there were like 700, 800 people who showed up again. So another crowd would come in in the evening, adding to and replacing some of the people who were there earlier. So again, we did the same thing again. We held space, we prayed for people. I was there basically from nine in the morning until 11 o'clock at night, because we were all there praying for people, holding the space, because it was such a powerful vortex of energy. And it wasn't to solve anything, because we weren't there to solve anything that time. We were just there to counsel and console and be a caring person. I shared in, my, in the other broadcast, in the other group I did, about how that was the second most powerful experience of being a practitioner I had. The first one I share another time, it's not relevant to this conversation. But it was powerful for me because it really deepened me in my appreciation of how I could support people. It was a potent experience for me of how, even though I didn't have a clue what was going on, I could still anchor in the truth. I could still hold the space. And frankly, I believe it was the thing that made me a better coach beyond being a practitioner because that certainty that I learned in prayer work, that certainty I was taught in class, and that certainty I practiced that day for 12 hours was transformational for me. It brought me to a different place. And yes, there's a lot of, set of, there's a lot of memorializing today, and there's also a lot of interesting dialogue on social media about what really happened, and I'm not gonna get into that in this talk. I have my own particular views, as in who, who was behind everything. Um, but what I do know clearly, as a reminder today, just as it is every day as far as I'm concerned, is you have a greater opportunity to love more now than you ever did before. You have a greater opportunity to share your love with yourself and other people than you've ever done before. We don't know how long we've got. And that's one of the things that was so powerful about that day is, you know, as other people posted today, you know, you don't know how long you've got. Make sure you tell the people you love, love the people you know, love your friends, love your, you know, love your loved ones express your love it takes sometimes a trauma like this a tragedy like this to bring us home to that place of recognizing we need to love ourselves and love each other although for most of us it's about loving each other not loving ourselves and you know my point about loving yourself first so i'll be a reminder of that so the the piece i want to give you here is a reminder that today is not the only day to do this today is a day yes that has a um is a landmark in our history. It's a milestone, it's a, it's a historical moment that changed our culture 
And I was, I was reading a post earlier today about how the next year or so after September 11th, New York was a different city. People came out of the woodwork loving each other, supporting each other. It's kind of going back to the way it was in some ways. But for that first year or so, maybe a little bit longer, New York was a different culture. It was a love, it was a, it was a loving city, basically. It was the most profound place. I have a question for you. What trauma or tragedy do, do you have to face before you remember to love other people? Strangers even, people you ride on the freeways with, ride on the buses with, ride on the trains with, that you spend time with, people you work with. Do you have to wait for a tragedy or trauma to show your love, to show your appreciation, to care? Why not start now? Why not be of service to other people? Why not remember that we're all connected? It's the biggest shift I think I can say because we have been through so much stuff over the years in our own lives personally and culturally. And then we go back to what we default to. So my encouragement in this moment, I'm realizing I'm saying this, is how we can love more. We can express more. We can share more. We can teach more. We can inspire other people more every single day. There's no um, need for a tragedy or a trauma or a, or a um, well, tragedy trauma that covers it, I guess. There's no need for one of those to remind us that we can love. Just look in the mirror and remember you can love yourself. Look in your, part your partner's eyes, your friend's eyes, and remember you can love them as well. Loving is powerful. I talk about this so many times that love is the answer for everything. I talked about that a couple of days ago, by the way, in one of my broadcasts, so go check that out. Being able to love yourself, being able to love somebody else, is a gift not to be overlooked. We don't know how long we have, so why not love yourself anyway because you don't know how long you got. When I was due, we don't have a countdown timer or a clock or a, um, an appearance of death with a, a scythe to come up and tell us it's time to go. When it happens, it happens. And it'll be maudling, but I'm saying don't waste time. Take time now to love, to express, to care, to share, to give your gifts. I do these talks every day as part of my calling. My work shifting, I don't really feel it. I was talking to somebody today about this. It's getting more into the spiritual arena again. It's coming back to what I started with in 2001, 2000, excuse me, with my practitioner studies. I've learned over the years more and more that everything comes from the source of who we are. There is no God outside. I said to the dear talk up, talk up, please. Hmm. I'll try that again, chipping over my own words. I did talk about this a few days ago, Sunday actually, um, a couple of days ago, about how, well, my belief about spirit and God being within us. And to that end, we have free will. So you don't need to be a victim to anybody else's beliefs, rules, structures, whether it's a partner, a company, or a government. You're able to free, you can, free, you can think freely, you feel free to think, yeah, that works. Feel free to think for yourself, because as you are like all of us, source within by spirit, you have also equal authority with everybody else. So blindly agreeing to other people's views, not recommended. So my, I didn't want, I'm going off tangent a bit, but I want to come back to the point again about teaching truth. I'm clear more and more that my work in these talks and in my coaching is stepping into a new place additive to what I've already done. So I'm just saying this now as an exposure of myself, so to speak, to speak my truth, is that that place of supporting other people is what drives me. I, back then in 2001, it was a massive calling for me to step into that place, all of us who were there as practitioners. I never forget that and haven't forgotten it. And that reminder is in my coaching, it's the same thing. It's to serve, to inspire, to uplift, and to encourage people to live more fully. I'm going to throw something out as an invitation today because today is an interesting day as a reminder, is if you're going through some emotional or um, uncomfortable memories that you want to get some prayer support and some guidance with, I don't normally offer this because it's not, not part of my regular coaching, but if you want to get some help with that, message me. I'll put a link in the comments. No, I won't put a link in the comments. Just message me over social media. Um, because some people are challenged by the memory 18 years ago. I understand that. But for me, it was a powerful place of unification, of recognition, and of coming together in a ways that I'd never seen before. So that I, I hold for all of us all the time. Even now, it's interesting, somebody else, somebody else has 
post today reminded me that again after September 11th in New York especially it was extremely unified community very loving very supportive and unconditional it's been rift it's, it's been what's the word not word it's been um, not rift it's the wrong word a rift has been created that's the word I'm looking for um, it's been split down in so many ways because of left and right up and down right wrong belief systems so we've gone away from that I I like to think we can come back to that without some outside influence like a tragedy trauma as I mentioned and if you're feeling stuck I can help you if you're dealing with stuff where you're feeling right wrong going on because of what happened or even stuff going on in your present life reach out to me I, I'm holding space in my uh, in my calendar you can reach out and get support it's my invitation my encouragement and my recommendation so, so, so I'm going to put some links in the comments because I always do that um, I mentioned how it's time to love yourself with more as well as other people. So the link, some links I'm going to put in the comments. Yes, I'm going to post some links in the comments for you. Um, I wish I mentioned my book at the beginning. That'll be in the comments because I always promote my book. My self-love practice will be in the comments because I think self-love is actually my self-love guided meditation practice that I talk about often. I'm going to put that in the comments because if you're feeling stuck and we get support, that will help. If you want to reach out for direct support from me, um, message me on social media or I'll put a link in the comments. For a conversation if you want to get some relationship help my self-love my um compliment com complimentary clarity conversation will be in the comments i'll make sure i get that clear so those three things links will be in the comments just message me over social media if you want to get some direct support i'm available for, for prayer counsel guidance whatever you need on that area especially if you're feeling painful memories coming up i'm here to help that's my focus that's my work so i want to ask you as a question thanks for love christina I'm asking you this question for yourself is how can you love yourself more today than you did before? How can you love other people more today than you can before? If you want to put that in the comments, feel free. If you don't, it's fine too. But my the gaunt the, the the loving gauntlet I'm throwing down for you is take on love as a choice. Take on love as a priority and take on love as a way of life. I thank you for watching. I thank you for being with me. I do invite you to respond. If you have any comments or thoughts about this, please share below. If you want to share this with anybody you want, feel free to do that as well. Um, and again, if you can reach out for support, you know where to find me and I'll get a, put some links for you to look at after I sign off. Take care of yourself today, especially like any other day, but especially today if you're going through any feelings of grief or sadness. Take care of yourself today, especially. I know it's a challenging day for some people, especially my friends on the East Coast. Um, but even as West Coasters need some love, need some love too. So with that, I thank you for watching. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, by the way, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page, which is Barry Selby. Come and join me sometime. Um, done a lot of these over the years, as I mentioned. So there's replays you can watch on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. You can watch the replays there, or more easily because there's more of them showing up there for some reason. Oh, like my page on Facebook as well, please. On YouTube, I have a channel called Barry Selby. Surprise, surprise, all my social media is my name. There's a playlist on there called Messages for the Masculine. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and you can peruse the titles in much easier sorting system because that's the only thing that's on that channel, um, or that playlist. So with that, I thank you for watching. I've given you the links, I've given you the replays, and I've given you my love. I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care.